Thank you for tuning in to Stay Sharp with Razor Leaf, your secret weapon for all things digital manufacturing. In this episode, Jonathan interviews Jen Farello around navigating the waters when choosing the right partner in the digital manufacturing space. As our resident expert in creating and managing successful partner programs, Jen outlines all the reasons why companies seek partnerships and emphasizes why it's so important to have a clear understanding of the goal of the partnership before setting out to find a partner. The team discusses the qualities of a successful partnership, including aligned core values, active listening, and a willingness to challenge and be challenged. Let's tune in. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Stay Sharp. My name's Jonathan Scott. I'm one of your co-hosts. I'm here with another of our co-hosts, Jen Farello. Hey, everybody. And uh, we're back with another episode talking about all things digital related to products and manufacturing. And today, we want to dig into a, a really important topic in this space about partnerships and how to choose a good partner for things. And, and the reason we put this topic um, into an episode is, you know, in this space, there's a lot of, of detailed technical work, technical knowledge, tools, all those things, very specialized information that, that means that it's hard to find everything you need, either inside your own company, your own organization, or with a specific partner that maybe you already know, or whatever the case may be, it's hard to find everything that you need in one place. So it's it's really important to be able to find expertise, find tools, find people that you can partner with to get your, your goals and objectives met. So it made sense to us to, to dig into that a little bit. And the great news is that we have an expert here in my co-host um, to talk a little bit about that, to talk about partnerships and that sort of thing. So the, the roles are reversed today. I get to be the interviewer and Jen gets to be the interviewee. <laughs> so uh, let, let's dig in and start, Jen, with, you know, what, why, why are you an expert in this? So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your background related to partnerships? Sure, sure. And it's, being called an expert in anything just kind of makes me antsy. So we can, we can, I'm knowledgeable. Let's let's start there. You've done um, it to me, so I get to do it to you. <laughs> well, you are an expert. Anyway, um, <laughs> so um, unlike uh, you and Derek and Eric Dubell, our, our CEO, um, I haven't actually had a stint in manufacturing. Um, matter of fact, I've been in software pretty much my entire career. Um, and I've actually been in, I, I took a look at it, I've been in partnerships about as long as you have been in the PLM space. So if you're an expert, then I guess that would qualify See, me as well. Makes you an expert. I started as a actually as a developer. Um, you know, like I said, I started in software. So I started as a developer um, and got into a little bit of product support. And at one point my boss came to me and said, Hey, you know what? We've got this partner of ours who if and they were a major partner, and he said, if we don't turn this ship around, they're very unhappy. If we don't turn this ship around in the next three months, they're gonna fire us. And this was a major source of our revenue. Um, they were very unhappy. Uh, in three months, they were well-trained. They were happy. They were, they were getting their issues resolved. And I think they're still a partner for that company 30 years later. So, you know, it, it was my first introduction into how really listening intently to a partner, understanding their needs could really improve the use of their technology and um, get better results. They were They were happy company was happy and I was hooked. So, well, there you, um, go. It's, you know, that's, I've been in partnerships in one way or another ever since. Awesome. That's, I mean, I, I know we've talked about this in different episodes, but, um, you know, passion in this space is great. And I, I mean, I, I get from an experience like that, why you would be passionate about this. So that's awesome. So uh, clearly you mm -hmm. are an expert in partnerships. Good to have you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to get something out of the way immediately because to me, it's it's the elephant in the room. Um, we're talking about partnerships and how to find a good partner. And uh, guess what? Razor Leaf is often somebody's partner, right? <laughs> we, it's true. It, it is true. We are a partner. But this is not supposed to be a shameless plug for, you know, pick us, pick us, pick us. Um, right. It's really about um, just picking a good partner in general, which is an important thing to do. I mean, it's, you know, any sort of partnership, whether it's friends, socially or your life partner or you know a business partner it's an important thing to do you got to get it right 
I was going to say, we, we should dig into, okay, so how, how do you do that in a minute? But hold that for, but, but why? To, to your point. I mean, I, I teased this a little bit when I said why we thought an episode on this was good, but why is it important to, to pick a partner at all? Like, what's the point? Well, you actually did a really good job of kind of teasing it out. It's because very rarely can you do anything completely on your own anymore. Um, whether it's, you know, getting parts that you then assemble and put into your, man, you know, your, your final product. Um, th- the pace at which things accelerate, the pace at whether it's production or innovation or getting to market faster, et cetera, the way things are changing so quickly requires you really to specialize and to focus on your, your own area of expertise, um, which gives you an, an opportunity to find others that folk that can contribute to that. It's their area of expertise. I spent probably 25 years uh, at working at two technology component providers, okay? And it allowed, the work that we did allowed, for instance, SolidWorks to focus not on visualization for e-drawings, but on their, their special sauce. Um, right. Same thing, it's, you know, it, it allows you to focus. Um, I, I want to dig in on that a little bit, I because I, I, I think I have witnessed that from from the other side of companies who are like, well, maybe we should partner, maybe not. I'm not sure. We could probably do that. To your point, if you think you can do it, but you're not sure, and then you try and do it, you're probably not going to get as far as if you said, wait, if I really need that, let me just find somebody who can. To your point, focus, right? I mean, you you might do it, but you might not do it well. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite things. Is you, just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should, right? right. I, I have said a couple of times in this podcast that my husband's in home remodeling. His greatest competitor is the do-it-yourselfers. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing it yourself, whether it's your home or something else, like it's going to take you additional time. It's going to take you, it's not your main job. So it's going to cost you, you're going to make mistakes, et cetera. So it's much better to pull somebody in that knows what they're doing. It allows you to focus on innovations in your space and really allows you to like get ahead rather than spending time reinventing the wheel. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know? I, I feel like I've seen that in my own experience. Like you said, personal experience, lots of people can probably draw that analogy into this space and say, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've experienced that myself. Maybe it is time to get an expert. But th- that that begs the next question. Why in our space, in this digitalization space, why do people look to partner? Is it just for technical need like that? Or are there other things that that make sense to partner for? Well, I think that's one of the first things that people need to decide is why do you, what, what are you looking for in a partner? Um, are you looking just for technical skills? I mean, a lot of people outsource development, particularly to offshore resources. Um, but Sometimes it's not just that. It's like you want to basically say, like, okay, we want development, but we need we need some project management resources as well. We want to basically define the project and hand it to someone rather than do the the day to day, you know, making sure mm-hmm. everybody's getting things done. Sometimes it's bringing in technology that you don't have. You know, whether it's you know we do a lot around PLM, whether it's bringing in a PLM system, um, or you know, a, a lot of the vendors that I've worked with in the past bringing in component technologies to build something mm-hmm. with. Um, but a lot of times it's it's expertise and guidance. It's, you know, like, okay. let me focus on what I'm doing and can you guide me? Can you take me through some of this? It's actually some of the things that we're doing in this podcast really is, is focusing on um, teaching and educating and, and bringing folks along. That, it, you touched on a couple of important ones there, right? I mean, you, you might be looking for just a, a person, a skill set. Right. right, you might be looking for a capability, right? That's more than just a skill set. Somebody you want you want them to manage it, handle it, take care of it. Just give me that capability. Sometimes you're looking for a tool, a component. It, so it could be a lot of different things. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes it's it's not even that. Sometimes you're looking for an opportunity to broaden your network as well. That's a okay. a real advantage of um, partnering with folks is that they might lead you to someone else. You know, they might not have everything you need, but they might lead you to another provider. And right. then, you know, the, the other reason for partnering is obviously on the sales side of things, you know, reaching new channels, new markets, et cetera. So increasing your, your revenue. So there's a lot of reasons. And the first thing you have to do really is figure out why you want to partner, what you're looking for, um, because otherwise you're not going to know what kind of partner you need. Sure. 
And that last one you brought up makes me think sometimes you, beyond knowing why you want a partner, also be open to other possibilities of why a partnership might might be valuable for you, right? Because when you just said sales, I thought, hmm, that's not what would have occurred to me if I was if I was in a digitalization project and I'm out, <clears throat> I'm saying, all right, I need to do this. And I don't know how to do these things. Let me find people who know how to do those things. You know, I get the looking for a skill, looking for guidance, looking for a tool, that kind of thing. But you make a good point. Sometimes maybe you get a couple of things out of a partnership and maybe you're getting other things like an, an expanded network and right. finding capabilities you didn't know you needed or the sales part was a really interesting one that you brought up. You know, I, I know in our space, people think about that, right? Like, oh, well, if this systems integrator partners with that tool provider, I'll get to know their customers. They'll get to know how I do think, you know, there's synergy there, that kind of thing. But interesting, thinking about why. Is well, important. and I was also kind of, you know, I mean, this is a, a broad topic, right? So the, the partners that I manage for Razorleaf include all of those, the technology right. providers that, you know, whose technology and support we use, um, our resellers. So that's the new markets, new channels, et cetera. Um, solutions partners, partners that come in and provide technology and services under our umbrella and vice versa. So it's it's a wide variety. So to clearly, you got to know what you want if you're going to go look for a partner, right? But I mean, let's dig into... To so how do you, how, how can you be successful at doing it? If you know what you want, or you think you know what you want, what do you need to do to succeed? Well, it's funny because it's, it's so much like, I mean, so much of the, it, so many times we've talked on this podcast about planning for success. And that's really r- where you have to start is, again, not just knowing what skills you're looking for, what capabilities you're looking for, but also defining what you want to accomplish, Okay, so basically having at least a sketch of this is what I this is what I want to achieve here, and that includes having a at least a rough timeline. You know, do you need this done in six months, at the end of the year, you know, in two years, et cetera? A rough idea of how much you want to spend. It's probably not going to be one hundred percent accurate. It almost never is because you're like everybody thinks things are going to be cheaper than they are and <laughs> take less time. <laughs> but you know, you at least have to have that sketched out. Like, okay, it's bigger than a bread box sort of thing. Um, And also an important part of that is the resources that you have to bear on this. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's talking about like project management. Are you planning on doing that or at least having a liaison? Your partner will probably have a project manager or they should as well. But, you know, will you have somebody that's willing and able to liaise with them? Are you going to, do you have the right buy-in from other departments that may need, maybe they're not integrally involved, but they need, they're need they tangentially involved and they need to contribute. Um, scheduling is one of the hardest things. But just knowing what you are bringing to the table is a good place to start. And then you yeah, can... That's, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and then you can start looking for like what type of partner you need. And that's kind of a, a mix of all of the, the things that we just talked about, right? So are you looking for uh, a developer house? Are you looking for a systems integrator? Are you just looking for the technology um, or reseller, et cetera? So a lot of things to consider, but it's really the first part is figuring out where you want to go and what you need to get there. Yeah. And I like what you said about, you know, have something in mind, a couple of things you mentioned, like when you said budget, things like that, it's, is it bigger than a bread box? What's, what is it roughly? Right. right. And I, from, from my experience, I think it's, it's good to go in with that concept, like you said, but not to be too fixed in it either, right? right? Because you're you're basically you're having some kind of of sales relationship here, right? You got to negotiate between the two parties, like, well, what can you do? What do I need? Let's both be flexible, and we're likely to find a match. And that's what you're after, right? You're after a partnership. That's that's exactly right. And it's it, you. Have, I think one of the biggest things to remember is that you are leaning into the. I mean, the reason you're looking for a partner is because you've at least recognized on some level. It's not desirable to do this all all by ourselves. You know, right. you may not even be 100% convinced. Maybe somebody said, you know, why don't you go search this? Before you go doing that, before you go, because I mean, we're all engineers here. You're like, it, that is our tendency. You know what? I could, I could do that. Um, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe you're not even 100% convinced. But, you know, go, remembering that the reason you're reaching out to a partner is because at some level you've said, I might not be able to do this on my own, or maybe it'd be a better idea to partner. So realizing that they have that expertise and 
they will help you to create a solution together. That's that's number one is, you know, aside from where you want to go and how you want to do it, it's um, it's realizing that they're they're there to help. Right. They're going into it with a partner mindset, right? Not a mm-hmm. not a transactional mindset, but a yeah, that makes sense. So one more on, I guess, on this topic of sort of like finding and looking for and that kind of thing is, okay, you mentioned several different kinds that, that mm-hmm. you might need to find in this space, but where do you look for them? What, what's a good way to go about looking for them? Where are you going to find them? That kind of thing. Well, I mean, it's, you know, we all have at our hands the the magical internet and AI and like, you know, special search and all the things. Um, certainly you can go that way. Um, but honestly, most of the most of the good partners that I have found have come through recommendations of one form or another. Um, good place to look is, you know, if you've got you know, friends in the industry that you trust, ask them who they've worked with. Um, word of mouth is a big thing. You can also do a little bit of sleuthing on your own. Look at your competitors. Mm-hmm. They're doing the same kind of business. Do they list their partners? You know, can you, if you do that search, can you find out announcements where they've partnered with someone for a particular technology or as a provider. It's a really good place to start anyway, is to... So you're, you're saying it's like dating, ask a friend of a friend? <laughs> it is very much like dating. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a match a match site for this? But huh, something to think about. I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm like, I, instantly I'm like, swipe right. Hold No, hold on. You're not talking about that. No, but, you, no, but that makes sense, right? I mean, finding things you can you can do research, but a lot of times if you're looking for a, a, some kind of trusted relationship like this, not not just a oh, I want to swipe my credit card and buy something, you're going to want to think about you know reputation and relationship and those kinds of things. So finding people through trusted relationships to, is often helpful. Sure, that, I mean, yeah. if not a dating site, it's it's more like having your friend introduce you rather than just right going to a bar. Almost right. always a better idea. You at least yep. know a little bit more about what you're getting into. <laughs> Fair enough. So, okay, let, let's assume someone has, has figured this out. They think they figured it out. You know, how, how do you dig into a partnership and get, get the most out of a partnership, right? I mean, what's, what's the right way to approach it? What do you need to do? Well, I think when you, so most people would start with, you know, they've, there are a couple of providers that are, they've, they've, they've narrowed it down, right? I mean, that's what mm-hmm. we all do is there's all these things, all these people that we can work with. We've defined what we want to do. It, we've gotten it down to these three to five providers or what have you that we want to take a look at. Um, one of the most important things that I've found, and it's, this goes back to my story as well, is um, the importance of listening. You know, we, and we talked briefly about the importance of listening to your partner, but what you're looking for in a partner is somebody who's actually listening to you. Mm, not, yep. I mean, and, and I mean active listening, not just like, listening to respond, because that's a big thing. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when they say this, I'm going to say that. Um, but right. it's more... Not politeness. <laughs> no, it's, well, and and no, it's 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 even not that. It's too often, um, and, you know, I can say this again. I can abuse engineers. I can abuse salespeople because I'm a little bit of both. Um, you know, li- it's listening. To, that's a big thing with salespeople is just listening to respond. Listening right. for the right cues. Okay, when they stop, I'm going to say this. And when, you know, no, what you... What you want is somebody that's actually listening empathetically and like to the whole picture, to the things that you're not saying. Um, right. And I would say even more important than that is that they're asking for more information. Um, because a lot of times, and I ran into this even in development, you know, you would have somebody report a bug. Hey, like, I need to be able to do this. And too often, Somebody, you know, you would have your developer and they would, okay, I, I coded it up. Like, and now you can do that without actually saying, no, wait, it wasn't really Why intended. To do that? <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't intended to use, be used that way. Why are, what are you actually trying to achieve? Because yeah. again, this is, you've brought this partner on or this prospective partner on because of their expertise. So realizing that they have a wider view than you do on this particular topic or, or what have you. Um, they should be able to pull out information that you didn't realize you needed or had and help you sketch like a, a bigger and better picture of the, the solution in the end. Right. And to your point earlier, that, that's part of what you're looking for, right? I mean, if you're looking for 
real help on this. It should be something beyond what you can already bring to the table. So if all they're doing is, you know, like you said earlier, passively listening and just consuming information, are you getting what you really needed out of it? That that makes sense. Well, and one of the things that you had touched on was um, that it's not transactional. And that's a mm-hmm. big thing because a lot of times somebody, you know, like you will have a prospect come to you and say, hey, I want this. And you give them that without any, you know, like, and everybody's like, oh, well, that's a good provider. They gave you what you wanted. A lot of times it's not what you wanted. It's what you said you wanted. It's what you thought you wanted, but it's not. <laughs> and now everybody's pissed off because like, you know, they did their job. They did what you right. told them to, but they didn't really take the time to listen to you, to ask the question, discover what you needed, and then say, you know what? I hear what you're saying. That's not what you want. You want this. And you have to be ready also as a partner, as the the hiring partner, if you will, or the, the company that's seeking to partner. You have to be willing to lean into what they're saying. You know, if somebody comes back to you and says, yeah, it's not exactly what you want. This is this is kind of what you want to think of, be thinking about it. You have to be open to listening to that and thinking, well, you know, you're right. I, that's why I'm asking the questions. I'm assuming you have the answers, so, you know, you must be, you know, yeah. like, let's at least talk about that. The, the challenge there is, of course, those are the th- kind of things that are maybe going to lengthen the budget or, you know, increase the budget <laughs> and lengthen the, the time period. Yeah. As you're saying this, I'm just, I'm thinking about so many experiences that, that I've, I've had, I've been part of over the, you know, dang it, you gave me exactly what I wanted. Mm, not what, what I, what I need. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it, it reminds me of another thing that we see in this space a fair amount. And I don't want to sidetrack us. I'm sure at some point we'll have an episode on this, but it reminds me of RFQ processes, right? right. Sometimes when, when folks need a partner, but they think of it as a transaction, and they go out looking for, I've got all the details. I, I, this is exactly what I need. And it's, you know, a very sterile process mm-hmm. and there's no conversation, communication. And what they get at the end is exactly what they asked for and not what they needed. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great way to do it sometimes. That's, that's a very good example. And it's one of the reasons that the RFQ process a lot of times breaks down is yeah. because you don't have the opportunity for that back and forth to really ask the questions. Yeah, I mean, you can respond. And generally speaking, you have to respond via text so that everybody can track it and they can send out the questions to everybody um, and the answers to everybody. But like, you don't get that we're creating something together sort of thing, that sort of interaction. Yeah, back to the dating thing. It's sort of like, you know, choosing a a mate Mm -hmm. via only text message. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Probably, probably (laughs) not. That's that's kind of a scary analogy, but... (laughs) But it really, Who knows really what brings you might it get, right? it really brings it home. You're right, you know. And I think right. the <laughs> Didn't and, even take us off track. <laughs> the I think the other challenge, um, you know, when you're selecting the partner and creating the solution to begin with, is um, checking your own ego at the door. Mm-hmm. Because again, engineers tend to be a confident bunch in their own abilities um, and in their own um, expertise. But do you realize when you're when you're saying, hey, I want to partner with somebody, is, is you're saying, let's build this together. And that means it doesn't necessarily mean who gets credit or who wins or who has the right idea. It's it's a we're in this together sort of feeling. You know, right. and it's you have to be ready for that. And these are all things you do internally before you're even, you know, ready to partner. Yeah. I, I mean it's I think you're bringing up some excellent points. It just so <laughs> rings true over the experiences that, that I've had and things I've seen over, you know, over my career where people really value, um, if, if they really want a partnership, they really value being challenged to your point. Right. And those are folks who have checked their ego to start with. They're like, look, I don't know everything. I'm, that's why I'm hiring you. And when they hear something that's really counter to what they expected or believed, when they can step away and go, all right, well, I don't feel you know, challenged or criticized, I feel enriched. I'm glad you said it. It adds to this, right? You're helping me. Right. Boy, that's that's when you really feel like people are working together as a team. Right. And it is a process. I mean, it's there's plenty of times that I've been in conversations when it has been interpreted as a challenge. Um, you know, particularly, I'm not, I'm not getting on any platforms here, but particularly as a woman, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, oh, wait, wait, no, I, I got this. 
there's a lot of men in our industry and there's a lot of ego around that. But like once, if you're, if you're ready to partner, you can walk away from that initial situation, calm down and be like, yeah, actually, you know what? There was a lot of truth to that. So. Yeah. That, and I, that, I think that gets to a, a really important point about this whole thing, which is, you know, you're, you're looking for a match and sometimes the match isn't there. Yeah. Um, and it, it may be that both parties are, are good and helpful and great people and all those things, but it doesn't mean they're, they're aligned. So, I mean, what, how do you figure that out or, or what's the, what's the right way to figure that out? What's important about it? It's, it's hard to say what the right way to figure it out sure. is, but, but you're right. It is really important. Um, because it's, it's very, like, it's very easy to find the technical matches for a lot mm-hmm. of things. But what you need in a partner is, again, it's a long-term relationship. Even if you're doing, you know, a simple migration project or you're doing like an implementation and you're thinking, oh, okay, this is, we'll get this done and then we'll move on. The, the reality is that relationship will tend to linger. If it's a good one, you'll go back to it, you know, or if there are some challenges in the implementation, it may, it may draw out longer or you may need to like come back and say, okay, you know, now we need to upgrade. Um, now we need to, we, we didn't know about this. We need to do this additional work. It's a long-term relationship and you want to make sure that your values are aligned. Um, one of the things, I mean, we've mentioned a, a time or two about comparing it to dating and it really is the same thing in a lot of ways is you want to make sure that the partner understands how your organization works, the things that are important to you, and that they are similar. So it's, you know, I've been really lucky that the um, the company that I'm working for now, Razorleaf, and um, the companies that I spent the most time at in the past, which are you know, ITI and, and Techsoft 3D, are like very focused on core values. And it's a strong part of who we are as a company. Um, it's really, it's effective in, in so many different ways like you, that you don't even realize. It's because it affects how people work when no one is looking. Or right. when like, they're, you know, you can't get to the right person to, you know, to get the approval for a decision. Like, and you have to make a decision. If you have a shared working framework, you know what that decision should be. And you can make it that way. Um, it's, you know, and it's it, one of the things that was really, uh, really struck me when I joined Razorleaf was how similar the core values are here to the ones that Techsoft had as well. And mm-hmm. they're, I mean, they're really, it's, so there's, there's, I think a lot of, you know, if I go down a couple of them, because I think they're kind of universal, right? It's, it's things like doing the right thing, you know, being agile and responsive, creating positive relationships, et cetera. So, I mean, it's, those are all things that you really want to look for in a partner, that they're wanting to partner. They're not just looking for the transaction. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you say that, though, because I, I agree with this, the point, right, that you want to pay attention to those core values when finding the right partner for you. But I, I feel like I've seen businesses or organizations with very different core values where they prioritize them very differently. To, to the point where, you know, what you said, a lot of, some of these are universal, right? maybe not universal across all companies, and you might see different flavors, and it can tell you a lot about partnering, right? I mean, I'll think of a particular example with without names, but a technology provider, somebody who makes a tool, who is, their core value is tech, the most advanced tech. That's why people work there. They love it. They're on the bleeding edge. They make the fanciest tech. It is the most awesome stuff. And, you know, relationships and people and that kind of thing. All right, yeah, we, we want to treat people well, but that's down the list. Tech right. is the thing. Another partner, we try to have good technology. Yeah, that's important to us. But it's about, you know, aligning, meeting people's needs, solving business problems, like that kind of thing. All right, they're that kind of company. And you know what? Any tech will do. As long as the tech meets the need, it's fine, right? So it's just kind of flip-flopping that priority order. But when a somebody is out looking for a partner and they run across those two, you know, it, it's really important to figure out how to line up with one or the other. Because you could look just at them technically and say, well, I looked at this product and I looked at that product and, and make a decision that way. But the, the truth of the matter is, you know, if you're in this space we're talking about, right. product digitalization, you might be picking a system or software or technology or whatever that you're going to have for 10 years. 
and you're trying to make it enable your business, it could be that that bleeding edge tech isn't the right thing. And knowing that about that partner before you jump in and create a 10 year relationship is really important, right? So this, this piece about core values makes a ton of sense, right? I mean, I, I've thought about it sort of generally as well. Make sure it's a good fit, you know, but you really put the the point on this about what are you looking for? Well, and it's it's funny. I mean, the the analogy that you made or the story you told there is you can actually, there, there's a place for both of those, right? If, mm-hmm. if say, for instance, the high tech, the, the bleeding edge is really what you need in your industry, my recommendation would be license the product, you know, get the technology, but you know what? have a partner help you with that, you know, right. because have somebody that understands partnering kind of as the liaison between the two, because that uh, the high tech, the bleeding tech, if they can't partner, if they can't be who you need them to be when you need, you're going to end up really frustrated. I yeah. guarantee. Like I would, you know, given the two choices, unless there's an imperative need, I would almost always go with the pick somebody who knows to how to partner. Even if the tech is right. a little bit less, because they will find a way to make it what you need. They'll go the extra mile to make sure that you're satisfied, you know, within their capabilities. That makes sense, right? I mean, and it, it comes back to one of the things you said earlier. Think about what you need. Do you just need the tech or do you need somebody to help you understand what you need and fit what you need that, that fits your business objective, right? You know, do you need advice or do you just need a technical skill or do you just, you know... But if you know what you need, you can find the right thing. And you just brought up another great point, which is probably one of these sort of second order pieces of advice, which is don't forget that you can you can change how you get what you need. It doesn't have to be one partner. It could be two. Buy the tech here, get the advice there. Yeah. I mean, we work with a lot of companies actually that do that, you know, where that's it's the technology is important, but they just can't partner. So right. You know, it's, that's where, I mean, that's where they use us, right? Now, again, I said it wasn't going to be a shameless plug, but a little bit of a plug. You know, we, we are, you're right. I mean, because we've done that. We do that, we, right? There are, there are technologies out there that folks are like, well, I love that, what they do, but man, working with them is tough. And they find somebody who's, uh, you know, a middleman. <laughs> Maybe that's not a shameless plug for us, but somebody <laughs> who can jump in the middle and smooth it out, right? And say, look, we get the tech. We know how to work with those folks. Uh, we also get businesses and we know how to partner. So, you know, we can help you on both fronts. But it, it's it's a great reminder. There's no rule that says, well, you have to pick one partner. You can only have one. Right. right. <laughs> no, you can you can get what you need wherever you need it. It's, yeah, it's the one place where this is not like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really, I'm glad you clarified really, that. It really is hard, you know, it really is highly recommended you just pick one there. Yeah. <laughs> Middlemen are not so awesome. Middlemen are not so so recommended. But no, it's it's not so helpful there. (laughs) No, no. So wait, does that make us hold on? Does that make us a PLM therapist? Possibly. Possibly (laughs) it does, actually. Uh, but no, the 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 middleman analogy is exactly that's the piece that I like so much. And it's it it whether it's you know here at work or you know at home, as I always I tend to be that person like, let's let's find the right answer here and the right answer here and bring them together to create something greater. So uh, that's the that's the thing that hooked me. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> I could understand that, right? That's why why that's a thing you're passionate about because there's a lot of value in that, and it's well, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it straight out. It's because you're the kind of person that we love having here at Razor Leaf, right? You're you're humble. You're not looking for the flash. Mm. You're looking for the where do I add value, right? And that's what these partnerships are. They're how do I help? everybody involved, get where they need to go and add value to the process. Not, you know, am I the one who's, you know, it's, it's my ego. So right. it makes perfect sense that you'd see a lot of value in that. Okay. I know we are probably getting close to our time. So I want to come back to what I think I heard today and kind of kind of summarize. And you you tell me where I missed it or where maybe there needs to be a little, you know, cherry on top of what I'm saying. But I, I think a lot of what we talked about is you need to know what you're looking for, right? You need to be open to it and say, look, there's something I need here. What is it I need help with? And really consider what are you looking for? Um, that's that's a, a key step to finding right. a good partnership. And remembering 
you know, what are your parameters? But being flexible about them, but bringing something to the table there to say, here's what I'm looking for, what I can bring to the table, money, resources, whatever it might be, um, so that you can go looking. And then once you go looking, remember it's a conversation, not a transaction, right? Be open, talk with folks, um, make sure they're listening to you actively, that kind of thing. And then think about, um, as you're sort of negotiating what you're going to do in a partnership, think about, are they the the type of folks you want to work with? Think about their core values, your core values. Are they aligned? Are you getting what you need out of it? So, you know, that's, that's an awfully quick way to summarize a lot of the things we talked about. What, what did I miss, Jen? I think the only thing that you really missed, because it was a good summary, but the only thing that you really missed is it's, it's a little bit more than active listening. It is those probing questions too. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, you know, just my general feel would be like, if somebody responds quickly with, yeah, I got that. Here it is. They're, they're not digging in deep enough. You know, you're, you're trusting it's, like I said, it's um, my husband's in home remodeling. You don't, when you bring a contractor, you're bringing them into your house. You know, you're trusting them. It's, this is even more so. You're bringing them into your business in some shape or, or form. You're trusting them. So you need to, um, they need to be asking the questions to make sure that they can deliver on what you want. And the, the solution or the technology or the capability that they provide is what you're looking for. So active listening right. and, you know, questioning. Makes sense. Thank you for adding that. Good, sure. good cherry on the top. Okay, so that's great, Jen. But um, that's if everything goes well or everything's going right. Um, what happens when things aren't smooth, don't go well, that kind of thing? I mean, what, what is that like? Oh, well, that never happens. <laughs> that things always things always go glowingly, like, right? Relationships are always easy. That's um, right. No, it's it's a very valid question, and that's perhaps one of the areas where the core values comes in so important. Because if because things will get off track, they right. always do. Something always comes up, and if you've done the due diligence and you've chosen the right partner, and they've you've got that alignment, then generally speaking, it's much easier to take corrective action. Mm-hmm. And like, okay, let's work together. You know, we we work together on the solution. We'll work together on this particular problem. Um, but, you know, if you haven't done all of the right things and you perhaps you got a partner that wasn't 100% where you needed it to be, that's a lot more difficult. And it's probably something we should cover in a, a different podcast as far as, you know, we, we did one on why PLM projects fail. We can do one on what happens when partnerships go wrong. Go wrong, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's right, because there's there's a lot to, to dig into there, and yeah, we probably don't have time to get into that today, but that's it's an important topic to talk about. I, I like something you just said, though, about the, you know, let's assume it's not like going so wrong, but it's just, there's a hiccup. I mean, to me, uh, I feel like one of the things that um, I've seen work well is that people have a plan for that up front. They've talked about it, right? It has it goes back to that core value. Like, are you open? Do you have a dialogue? Do you have a relationship? Do you know how to say, look, that made me not happy. Can we fix that? <laughs> right. right. No, I, I agree. I mean, that's that's an important important part is as much of that as you can define up front and recognize that conflicts will come up, this is how they'll be addressed. Then, yeah. you know, you're really setting yourself up for success. Just like in dating. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prenup, whatever. So, um... Thanks, Jen. This has been really good. It's, it's been uh, fun. It's yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely fun uh, getting to play host and and <laughs> seeing you get to play guest. This is this is a lot of fun. So, um, thanks everybody for listening. Really appreciate um, Jen and her insight. If you've got questions about partnership, um, please send them our way. We'd we'd love to hear your questions, your thoughts, your experiences, anything that you want to share with us um, related to partnerships, stories that you've had that have gone well, and maybe horror stories too, but anything you want to share. We'd love to hear it. We like the feedback. Um, Please reach out to us through our social media channels, through our website, however you want to get to us, but we'd love to hear from you. Um, Until next time, stay sharp, everybody. Thanks for listening to this episode of Stay Sharp with Razorleaf. We appreciate you. If you have any questions for our podcast team or have an idea for a new topic for our team to cover this year, please send an email to podcast at razorleaf.com. We would love to hear from you. Also, leave a comment on our post and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, stay sharp.